Today's teardown is a cool engine out of a cool car. Today we're going to tear down the engine out of my buddy Ian's 2003 Mercury Marauder. And before I go into the details of this engine, Ian hit me up and said, hey, I replaced the engine in my Marauder. I sold the car. Do you want the old engine? Well, yeah, I got a whole shop full of people's old engines. Of course I want it. And then he wouldn't take money for it and brought it to me. So not only did he bring me something that he could have sold or parted out and made some money on, he spent his time and gas to bring it to me. What a nice guy. So I am going to mention his YouTube channel. He didn't ask me to, but he, is, he has a gaming channel. So if you guys like to check that out, I know not everybody's into it. I'll leave a link in the video description. But today we're going to tear down the engine out of his car. This has 155,000 miles on it. I know you guys love those details. And he gave me some history with it. Apparently this thing suffered some issues with the thermostat a few times. So it may have been warm at least more than once. And it also started to use oil after it had overheated. And he even told me he didn't always check the dipstick as often as he should have. And that's likely why the engine is on the stand. So today we're going to tear this all the way down, see what I can salvage, see what's bad, and have some fun, hopefully. The Marauder was essentially the hot rod version of the Crown Victoria. The Crown Vix, iron block, single overhead cam, two valves per cylinder. The Marauder's aluminum block, dual overhead cam, four valves per cylinder. These engines make just north of 300 horsepower. I know that doesn't sound like a lot for today's standards. Most people are used to 500 horsepower, it seems. But this was 20 years ago. 300 was a pretty good number. These engines share similar architecture and components with other modular V8s from that era. This is essentially the same exact engine as an 03 or 04 Lincoln Aviator or 2005 for that matter. You guys thought I was going to say Cobra. It's not the same as a Cobra. I know you guys are already typing out your comments. It's not a Cobra engine. It's not a Mustang engine. It is literally only the same as the Aviator minus the manifolds. But it is pretty similar to those other 4.6 liter dual overhead cam engines. These engines are WAP blocks. W-A-P. I think that stands for not what Cardi B says it stands for. It stands for Windsor Assembly Plant. She got it wrong. This engine still has spark plugs in it, so I'd like to turn it over to see how it feels. I, I understand that there's going to be some compression. That is not compression. That doesn't feel good. No, that's way too much force. Oh my gosh. That doesn't feel good at all. I don't hear anything banging around in there though. And I can turn it all the way over, which means it should come apart with no trouble. The next thing we're going to do is pull the spark plugs. That one didn't break. I'm just kidding. They don't do that. They have been known to pull the threads out. Well, I got the plugs out. They all have painted tips on them, which makes me think that they might be original, but at 155K, I don't think so. But the first thing I noticed Holy gaparoni. They might be original. That seems like a stretch, and I'm not making a pun there. But I don't see any smashed tips or, or broken electrodes. The straps appear to all be in okay shape, and everything is uniform, which is a good thing to see. First, we're going to tackle the EGR pipe. I'm going to spray some penetrator on it. Let that soak in. Next, we'll remove this bracket, which blocks the top of the EGR pipe. And some more penetrator. Let's see if we can crack this loose. i use my small crescent wrench. Ooh, that's pretty tight. That's really tight. It turned, but I don't know if that was good or not. It doesn't sound good or feel good. Let's work it back and forth a little bit. Ah, yeah. Looks like it's pulling the fitting out of the uh, exhaust manifold, which is fine. We can work with that. All right, I think that's out. I think that's just hanging on there. We'll come back to that. Let's get to the other fitting. I'm sure this one will come straight out, right? Ooh, screamer. Will you hush?
Well, it's off. The next thing I'm going to do is crack the intake manifold bolts loose. We're going to pull the intake. I'm going to start with these difficult ones under here. You don't need to split these to get these off. I'm going to crack these loose by hand because the battery on my impact seems to have dysentery. Now this intake should lift straight up. Looks like 5 volt was living in here. There's no 5 volt left in here, please. Please. No, that's just a lot of junk. Okay, I'm gonna get this cleaned out real quick. And thankfully there's no mouse to evict. Let's take a look at these intake ports. That looks good. Also looks good. And it looks like there's a little debris in there. Probably from when I pulled the intake manifold off. They're nice and clean and I don't see any chunks of metal. I also don't see any signs of moisture, which is nice. I don't think this engine sat outside. At least not when it was outside of the car. Everything looks good. Now this is for sure a Midwestern engine out of a Midwestern car. And there's lots of corrosion, lots of rust. So I don't have a lot of hope that we're gonna get this exhaust manifold off, but we're still gonna try. Broke. Didn't even need to take that one out. Next, we'll spray some penetrator on the bolts. It's gonna work, guys. It's gonna work. I think we're going to need a little bit of heat to get these out as well. And thankfully, I got a little bit of indigestion tonight, so this shouldn't be a problem. Oh, that broke. Hey, look at that. Yeah. So far so good? That's bad. We'll come back to that one. I have an idea. What's the worst that could happen? And will you come out? Oh, now I did it. I give up. We're just gonna continue. Apparently that's not a good idea either. That's not coming off. What is happening? I don't get it. Well, I got my socket back because the socket rolled off of my table, hit the ground, and apparently that was just at the right angle to knock the broken stuff off. There's nothing left here. That's not coming off tonight, folks. Well, actually, let's get a 12 and hammer it on. What's the worst that could happen? I think we can get this one off with a 12. Hey, that is supposed to be a 13. Yes. Hey, it broke, which is better than I could have expected, I suppose. All right, so the manifold's off. We have one, two that broke at the rear. The rest of them came out. Uh, these are four thread heads. Uh, the casting ends in AG. The threads, the nine thread heads, the ones that everybody wants, the expensive ones, will end in DB or DC. So these are not the most valuable heads, but if I can save them, I will. Now, 
the dipstick tube, as if I didn't just get done fighting the exhaust manifold. It's gonna be fine, guys, gotta have a little faith. That was an eight, or maybe it's a seven now. It's a seven now, or it's going to be. That is the sacrificial seven millimeter. All righty, one bolt left. Please just, just come out. Yeah. Come on. I may have oil in it still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't wreck it. Now it's time for the valve cover. Blue, I really don't want to damage these. I gotta be careful. Ah, thankfully it didn't take a lot of force. Okay, so let's take a gander. First good thing, bridge chain guides still in place. That is a problem with these things. Doesn't look super varnished. A little bit of varnish in here, but it's not terrible. I don't see any rockers out of place. Lobes on the cam look pretty good. I don't really see anything jumping out at me here. Now this is the other side exhaust manifold. I'm not even going to make an attempt right now. I think that's an 11.787 size socket or something close to that. And uh, I, we'll just, I can pull the head with the manifold. We're just gonna do that later. Now the right side valve cover. A little assistance from Blue. Uh, maybe not. There we are. Similar story on this bank. Guides look like they're intact. I don't see any issues there. A little bit more varnish on this side, but not terrible. All the valve train looks to be pretty good. There's a plug seal. I don't see any major problems. I don't see a bunch of glitter or shiny stuff. Everything looks okay. Next, we need to remove the harmonic balancer. All right, let's see if my little impact will get this off. Easy peasy. Next, the water pump pulley. Next, we may as well take the water pump off. I've got my pan underneath it just in case. Wow, they came out really easily. This thing looks uh, pretty nice. It's not rusty, impeller looks good. I think this thing was replaced. It does not look like, eh, this might be an original part. It's still, this is a, an excellent condition water pump. <laughs> Nothing but box. Next we have some 13 millimeter bolts to take out. And a couple 18s. I think this will come off pretty easily. Yeah. These were never that bad to take off. Hey! Ow! Timing cover looks good. Don't see any issues there. Now I have seen a number of these engines fail from timing guides falling apart. 
these do not appear to be replacement components, but they are in very good shape. I don't see any problems here. Very, very primitive timing system, and that's not a bad thing. The first thing we're going to do is remove the cam gears, or at least loosen the cam gears. It makes this a little easier. Too much. Too much. Next, we will remove the tensioners. It's full of oil. Oil doesn't look too bad. Watch out. Ooh, we're leaking. Thank goodness for these pans. Yeah, tensioners look good. Now we'll remove these rails. Ooh, they just slide off. No tools needed. So yes, they do have some wear. They're not terrible. Let's see if we can find a date on these. Morse. Yeah, there's quite a bit of wear where the tensioner was. Yeah, these appear to be original. They're decent. Same thing here. The plastic's in good shape, but there's a little bit of wear from the tensioner. Ooh, that's not good. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's some silver sparkles, some forbidden glitter. First signs inside this engine. Let's get the rest of these rails out of the way. Ooh, that feels like it's under tension. Uh, what can we do about that? Blue. That can come off. I think we can get this chain off. Oh, that's under tension too. What? What has happened? Ah, there we are. What a chain. Not a ton of wear. Now the other one. Can I, oh, stuff's happening. It's trying to equal out the tension. Will you give, give it to me? Yeah, I don't see any dates on these, which lends me to think that these are original. Nice. Can I get this one off? Yes. Look at that. Beautiful pair of chains. And then this timing gear just slides right off. Next, I think I can slide this cam gear off. Yeah, that came right off. That came off. And I can't really get to that tensioner. Will these slide off? No. It still has a lot of tension. I think we're getting close. Oh, it's going to shoot something out. We don't need that. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. These rails definitely have some wear, but they're not bad. Another thing I really like about these engines is that you can remove the heads without taking the camshafts out. I think that's awesome, but we're going to take these covers off at least take a peek to see what they look like because if they're really scored up, I want to know. Let's get to cramming. I guess I missed it when I pulled the valve cover off, but I did find a little bit Forbidden glitter. Not a lot. It's just a little bit right there on that cam cap. I can unbolt these. Just a little tap. Wow, 
Wow, that's really in there. There we are. Oh, that's not good. Well, it starts off not so bad. All the rockers, pretty decent. Not a ton of damage or wear in the journals. But if you look a little closely, that's some foreign metal. And then you get to the exhaust side. More foreign material. And then you get to this one. Yikes, that one's pretty torn up. Now looking at the intake cam, it doesn't look too concerning until you roll it over and you realize what is bearing material, I'm assuming bearing material, doing on the cam journal? How could that get there? And then you look at the caps and they definitely show some wear, like there's been some metal that's not supposed to be there run through them. Maybe run a little dry. But the exhaust side, exhaust cam is the most telling. It's a lot of stuff that's not supposed to be there. And more and more. And this is why we pulled the cams out of heads like this. Because just because it looks good on the outside doesn't mean it's good on the inside. The last thing I want to do is sell something that's good when it isn't. And journal's pretty rough. They all are. Now, I don't know if that means these heads are trash. I, I don't think the four thread heads are worth a bunch of money anyway. If these were nine thread heads, I'd say they're probably worth some machining, but I don't know about these. Now, we can crack the head bolts loose. And this should just come right off. Well, there's the head gasket. Let's check this out. I don't see any cause for concern here. It looks good. Take a look at the cylinders. Well, actually, before we go any further, I don't think anything's broken, but we must do our test. That was a little loud, but so far so good. Aside from some debris in here, cylinder walls, not terrible, a little bit of wear at the edge there. We'll know more once the pistons are out. I don't see anything glaring except for my flashlight cylinder head looks pretty good as well i don't see anything too terrible i don't see any cracks all of the combustion chambers look very uniform before we get started on this head we need to get this uh, coolant pipe unbolted same thing as the other head we'll get the cam gears off first now on this bank, I can get the tensioner unbolted. I don't know if that's gonna help us. Blue, I need you. This is working out. I feel like something bad's about to happen. Let me put my hand next to it. Oh, see, it's fine. Whoops, that looks good. Let's cram these off.
I lost one. Very similar story on this bank. Rollers feel pretty good. Journals don't look terrible. I think there's less debris on this side. A little bit of damage there. There's some debris in that one. And that one is by far the worst. Same story with the cams. That's not supposed to be there. The journals aren't really too rough, but they're also not perfect. The journals, they are rough. This is the intake here. And the exhaust is worse, I think. Journals might polish out, maybe not. Now we can crack these head bolts loose. Okay then. Now this is going to be a little heavier and trickier. Should be fine. Oh, we're leaking. It's fine. Let's take a look at this head gasket. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see any problems. Nothing's, nothing's really jumping out at me. I don't see anything burned through. Decent. All right, first, science. Uh-oh, that's not good. Something's wrong right there. I don't think we've got any broken rods though. So this looks pretty normal, but this one has a distinct appearance of the combustion chamber. It seems to have made contact with the cylinder head. I don't see any deep valve dings, but the piston definitely struck the cylinder head. And the only way that happens is to have a rod that's either too long, which uh, that didn't happen, or a lack of bearing. I'm gonna go with that. That one looks pretty decent. And that one looks good. Some vertical wear on these cylinders. Uh, that shows it much better. We'll know more as we take this apart. And the cylinder head looks pretty good, but you can definitely tell piston kissed the head. You can see how it's clean. There's no carbon there. That's the piston making contact. I don't see any cracks or any other damage. And to be honest, this kind of damage, I'm using air quotes, is kind of superficial. I don't see any major issues here. And there's not a crack in the valve, I don't think. I think that's just some coating. Next, we're gonna make a big mess and turn this thing over. It's okay, we have pig mat. We're just gonna do this nice and slow. So most of it ends up in the pan. That's a lot of coolant. Oh, now the oil starts. Oh, there's a bunch of oil. Probably should have drained that first. We're draining it now. All right, that's good enough to get the pan off. 
Now we can pull the pan, and it appears that my M12 battery has gotten over dysentery. Usually, that takes you off the trail. I think this should just lift up too. These aren't, aren't glued down, and that's nice. Oh, that's not nice. Let's get this gasket. That's still good. That went somewhere. Well, the inside of the pan looks like a piece of impressionist art. It's pretty awesome. I mean, not for Ian, but for us. And I don't see any big chunks, but the pickup, there's some chunks. Some bearing chunks. But not enough to clog it. That's not what killed this. That's, that's because the bearing fell apart. Now I do remember that the problem was the second piston back. And let's check these here. Uh-oh. Ding! There's our problem. There's going to be some bearing damage in that cylinder right there. Can't check the rest of them because, well, we've got to get this stuff out of the way. Which is exactly what we're going to do now. Pick up tube. Out without a hitch. Next, we'll remove the oil pump. This slides right off. Thank God I had a pan there. Now we're going to take the oil pump apart, but I wanted to show you the metal debris that was between the, the gear of the oil pump and the crankshaft. That's this right here. See how I just wiped that away? That's not a good place to find metal. Now let's take the oil pump apart. Oh. Yeah, that's not so great. It's gritty and not nitty. Let's give this a bath so we can take a look at what we've got here. Well, the oil pump housing has some pretty deep grooves in it. And the outer case does as well. The gears, lots of damage as you'd expect. And the finish on the inside isn't even that good. This thing chewed on itself for quite some time. Now I looked at the rest of these. They all seem to be pretty good. Let's uh, turn this over so I can show you the uh, amount of play in that one cylinder that's missing a bearing. Okay, I think it's this one. Uh, yeah, it was that one. The rest of these are fine. When I say fine, they're not as bad as that cylinder. Now it's time to get the rods and pistons out. Start at the front of the engine. It's just cleaner that way. Let's see how hard these are to get out. Not too bad. Now we'll turn it over to get to the next two, which is the, the journal with the offending rod. See, that sounds different. So they're not under the same tension. Oh, it's rough. That's not shaped right.
starting to turn over a little easier. Still too much resistance. This piston is full of oil. While we're back here, we'll get this rear main seal plate out. I don't know if that's going to come out. Sounds like it's going to come out. That was a significant amount of oil. I think the uh, arms of my stand are inhibiting this from coming out. So we'll have to tackle that when we get to that point. That might be a little bit of a, a job. Well, I pulled the filter off off camera, cut it open, and let's go take a look at the results. Mm-hmm, yep. That's where the rod bearing is. It's in the filter. I don't think we can put this one back together, guys. Next, we'll get the oil filter housing off. Now this is the point in the teardown where I got really jammed up with these engines in the past. <laughs> to heck. <laughs> I can't get these out. Oh. Really now? Oh man. I am unsure of what to do at this point. I guess we could just beat the tar out of it. Well, that was dangerous. Don't worry, it was broken before. I know what I'm doing. Because sometimes these splayed bolts for the main caps are uh, impossible to get out. But you guys came up with some pretty good tips. Uh, I'm going to start to use a few of those. We're going to see if we can smack it with a hammer, kind of see if we can break the seal as such. Now, I'm kind of wondering if I should use the breaker bar or the impact. I think I'm going to try the breaker bar first. This is going to make or break us as far as getting the rest of this apart. Okay. Five down, five to go. Come on, don't fail me now. Yeah. Oh, what a relief it is. I can zip these out. thrust cap. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbolt the block and let it sag a little bit so I can get this plate out. It'll be a little easier to get this apart. Don't look. See, it's fine. Yeah, I don't know if that bought me any space in, in all realness. Let's uh, unbolt these arms. I still don't know if I can get this out. Okay, so this is sketchy. It's a bolt and a half holding this on. And I'm hammering on it. It really doesn't want to look, oh, here we go. Success. All right, I've got that out of the way. I'm, I've got three bolts holding the block now. I'm gonna get blue. I guess I could try to lift the crank out of it. We'll try that. We'll give it a give it a go. Hey, look what happened. All right, now the crank should lift right out. Like a glove. 
Let's start with the rod bearings. Uh, it doesn't look good. Not so great. And this was the offending one. You can see they're quite a lot thinner. They're distorted, especially this one, the top shell. There was honestly more bearing there than I expected for how much movement this had, but we'll get to that in a minute. The adjacent cylinder, rough. That one's not as bad, nor that one, or that one, but then that one was coming apart as well. The rods and pistons look okay for the most part. Not a ton of skirt wear, but definitely worth mentioning. This was the one that struck the head. And I didn't really see any cracks or damage. I mean, obviously it made contact, but it didn't do any damage to the piston. There's more pretty deep skirt wear. The wrist pins are not the most lubricated. I would wager there's a little bit of debris in there. Some of them don't move too bad. But if you remember me telling you that this thing had gotten hot once or twice, uh, when one of these engines or any engine gets hot, it can change uh, the springiness, that's a technical term, of the piston rings, which can cause it to start using oil. The rings lose some of their tension. That's why when you overheat an engine and you put a brand new head on it, sometimes they run great, but they also use oil. The main bearings, those shells aren't too bad, but these definitely had their fair share of debris run through them, especially the thrust, that's the rear main bearing. And onto the crankshaft. It'll be very apparent where the problem is. You can definitely see how much material is missing and that's why the end of that rod had so much movement on the crankshaft. It wasn't the bearing that had come apart. I mean, obviously the bearing is, is, is destroyed, but it isn't as bad as we've seen when they delete the bearing. I guess the crankshaft is not quite as hard of a material as some other crankshafts are. The rest of it doesn't look too bad, but in my experience, Ford cranks, very inexpensive new or remanufactured as such, they're not worth putting the time or money into. One thing we are going to do is take a measurement. We're gonna measure the good one, which the, the actual measurement is, is irrelevant. We're looking for the difference between the two. So I'm gonna measure this one, and then we're gonna zero it and measure this one. So let's, let's open this up. This is a highly, highly, highly uh, accurate tool from a fine city in Pennsylvania. Okay. So then we can zero it. Fifty-three thousandths off. Does that look like 53 thousandths off to you? Well, that's what this tool says. One thing worth mentioning about the block is it does have a broken off bell housing bolt. It's pretty common for these aluminum blocks. I've seen it happen many times. The bores really aren't too bad. There's definitely some wear. Uh, you can definitely feel your fingernail in that one. I would not suspect that this will clean up with a dingle ball hone. But is it worth saving? I know it can be, but is it worth it? It doesn't take much, and sometimes it doesn't even take that long for the problems to manifest from an oil starvation situation. I like to think of this as, just imagine the health of your engine as the ball at the top of the mountain. There's equal forces on both sides. It's pretty easy to keep stationary. All you have to do is check your oil, maintain oil level, and change it periodically. That's how to keep your engine healthy. The ball is at the top of the hill. The minute it starts running low on oil, 
it starts to move one way. It takes a lot more force to keep it up there, and eventually you can't hold it up there any longer, and that ball starts rolling downhill, and that's when the engine comes apart. Now, sometimes you can catch it early. You can put rod bearings in it, put an oil pump in it, a pickup tube, whatever is the problem, sometimes an O-ring. But in most cases, that what I've seen, by the time you catch it, the damage is done. This, this is done. This engine is done. Now, there's a lot of good parts here, but there was no saving this at this stage in the game. There's way too much metal run through this engine. The heads have damage. The pistons, one piston is slightly damaged. One of the rods is, is done. The crank is done. I mean, yes, you could rebuild it, but is it worth it? These engines aren't crazy expensive, but they're also not that cheap considering the car is 20 years old. And it doesn't matter what you drive. You could have some high-end exotic or some cheap car. Chances are you don't want it to fail. You don't want it to blow up. So I, I don't want to be preachy. Just check your oil. Just maintain your oil level. And if you buy a car that's used, which most of us do, and you don't know if it uses oil, and obviously not everyone that sells a car is super uh, ethical and tells you everything, check it really often when you first buy a car because you, you need to establish a pattern, a trend. Does it use oil? Does it not use oil? Does it use oil at this rate? Because then you can stay on top of it. And that's all you want to do. You want to keep the ball at the top of the hill. It might be pretty far-fetched, but that's just the way I see it. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. You all owe Ian a huge thank you. Again, if you're a gamer and you want to check out his channel, there'll be a link in the video description. If you'd like to buy any parts out of this engine or anything else I've torn down or will be tearing down, which there is a lot. There's Not everything's here. I still have 30 engines or so, maybe 25 to pick up. So that's, that's, a, that's a, a long list. But if you want to buy anything, uh, you can go to importapart.com or you can email us at importapartsales at gmail.com. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown as always. I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.